Okay, exercise two is due by 11.59 tonight. We just finished it in class. A lot of us got it submitted. It's worth two points, pass, fail. You get the requirements or not. We move on in our unit modules now to unit four and our first assignment. And we're going to return to compositing, raster imaging and compositing. And it will be the first of several compositing projects where we're using other people's pixels to make our own original vision. And so if we open up unit four, part of understanding that is understanding how to control what the, the end artwork is. You know, whether it's for commercial art, whether it's for fine artwork, very often artists are inspired by things that are out there and even appropriate collage elements, things like that, that are out there. In this case, we are going to sketch ahead of time our envisioned landscape. And you're going to sketch it with a recognizable foreground, middle ground, and background. They can be pretty loose sketches, but then we are going to use found components, found pixels at high enough resolutions to create them. And those are the two aspects that you turn in for the project, both your, your conceptual sketch and your final composite. In order to do this, because we're making it towards our own, our own artistic vision, our own original idea, there is a question of the day as part of the unit where we want to think about what are the advantages and disadvantages to being able to do this digitally, right? Compared to just making a painting on a canvas of a landscape. So I'm going to jump through that question of the day pretty quickly because this is something we're going to be discussing. But it's what are the advantages and disadvantages of digital raster art over traditional art? And you can be talking about it in two dimensions or three dimensions, right? And I have a link uh, back to our intro to the digital art discipline slides where you can see how compositing works, how uh, raster imaging works compared with what you might do with just traditional art tools. Advantages and disadvantages, right? But we're going to move past that for now because that will be the basis for our discussion later and looking at some past examples. So we're going to start our landscapes with a concept. So a landscape is about a setting. And a setting is a time and then a place, right? So if I want to say it's like a, a rocky desert, that's one aspect, but then you want to know what time. And you might say, oh, at sunset or in the middle of the day, and that's going to look pretty different, right? And it's a fantasy. So you could say a planet made out of balloons, right? And then you get to think, well, how many suns is lighting it? <laughs> you know? And that's the sense of time. What aspect do we want to see it? Please don't do a composite landscape. That's the dark side of the moon because I want to actually see content. So you're going to have to combine at least five different references. This is a pretty good past student example where they went a little over, over and beyond and showed their five uh, favorite references that they used as reference for their sketches. And ideally, you would sketch it both as a vertical format and as a, a horizontal format just to give you familiarity because the landscape could be either. And then the finished composite is about making it a believable scene where everything is integrated together, even though it's taken from at least five different sources. So here you can see it's taken from uh, seven or six different sources. This one's from seven layered together, kind of inspired by cartooning backgrounds and on and on and on. For more examples, you can go to the Imgur. This is an assignment we have a little bit longer than an exercise to work on, and we get to kind of refine it as we go. One thing about landscapes, we are going to be compositing creatures into these landscapes later. So these are what are called background plates. So you don't want to have any figurative content. So we want to leave animals and humans out. We also want to leave out anything that we would expect to be moving like operational vehicles. Because when we look at them, we want to just see them as something that would be like the backdrop on a stage for a play. 
that then we can put figurative elements into. So when things are moving really slowly, things like nebula and stars, that's fine. But if there are things that we expect to be moving quickly, like traffic on this superhighway, this is done kind of creatively as a blur to show that it's always moving. And then we'll have the option to animate these later. So thinking of it as a still background plate just makes animation easier later. Man-made stuff is a little bit trickier to composite with than organic stuff. And that's simply because we recognize when a building has been pushed out of perspective, right? In a way we don't recognize if a tree or a rock has been pushed out of perspective. But you are welcome to use kind of man-made elements or nature-made elements. And even though a waterfall is technically a figurative element in terms that it's moving, when it's far enough in the background, that doesn't affect it so much. So you can use your own judgment. You're not going to be graded down for, for having figurative elements in it. It's just something we want to avoid. So you can see sometimes the sketches are incredibly simple and yet can yield really interesting results. So it's really how you're going to puzzle piece some of your reference ideas together into an original concept. So instructor examples, I'll usually sketch digitally just so I can show you the sketching. But I encourage you for this first project just to sketch by hand and try some different things out. So how do we go about it? Let's get back to the assignment. And now we can jump right to the assignment. You can look at past playlists as well for, for other videos of me getting it started. We're going to digitally composite at least five found landscape images and arrange them into one large original fantasy landscape. And each image has to be at least 1,000 pixels in its smallest dimension. So this is large according to Google Image. For this, I'm going to recommend we use Pixabay. Pixabay has a ton of donated landscape photography that that is at very high good quality resolution. But before I can just start finding things I might want to make my sketch out of, I need a concept. So my concept is going to be Candyland. And I'm going to do Candyland at noon. <laughs> so bright day. So what kind of things do I need for foreground, middle ground, and background? Well, I'm going to go right to Photoshop. I only have a few minutes with you for the end of our class. So I'm going to go right to Photoshop and I'm going to open up a new file just to sketch on. All right. I was doing some painting earlier. That changes brush. So, how do I sketch? This is how I sketch. These are called thumbnails. I'm going to first, this is like my sketchbook page. I'm not going to fill the page. I'm going to draw a vertical format and a horizontal format. It's good to have space around. And my concept is here. So the concept is Candyland. I need a foreground. I need something, like I'll show you in the directions, that's in the extreme foreground. And I like to use animation background paintings as an example of this. So foreground often has things cropped off from the, the corners, right? Like this stump, this rock. Middle ground focused ones also have foreground elements that are kind of sticking off of the corners. And that, that gives you the most layers of depth. So what would work for Candyland? Let's make some sort of bush or tree. Or maybe uh, something made of like licorice. So I'll have kind of licorice reeds. And I can even make a little note of it. And then, okay, that's maybe where they are for the, this could be very loose. And then maybe this is where they are for the, the horizontal format. 
you're only going to do one landscape. And if you can't sketch it both ways, that's fine. But sketching it both ways shows you how much versatility you have when you're making it your own vision. So if you do have time, especially if you're like an art major and you really want to stretch yourself, uh, sketch both ways. It will help you out. So it's going to have licorice. Then what's in the middle ground? I'm going to have kind of fields, maybe cotton candy. These are going to be the different kind of things that I might search for, right? So I want kind of a cotton candy fields. Keep it pretty simple for now. The cotton candy will be like this. Okay. So that's number one. This is number two of the references I'll use. And then I need something that's maybe kind of mountainous. That's more of a background element. So foreground, middle ground, background. And rock candy. Rock candy mountain. It's a great folk song, Big Rock Candy Mountain. So that's going to be number three. Now, I might find when I start to look, and I want to be able to show that to you, that I might need a few different samples of rock candy <laughs> to make into my mountains. But as long as I have five, I'm meeting the requirements, five total. And then the sky, what's a good sky? Well, I can have cotton candy clouds. And I'm not feeling super creative right now. So that's going to be number four, cotton candy clouds. So I have two types, two colors of cotton candy. Maybe blue and pink. I don't know. And then maybe I want something in the deep foreground. So what would really say candy? Maybe a peppermint as a, a planet, you know? Or jelly bean. Oh, I like that. A jelly bean moon. Stuck in the atmosphere here, kind of tucked behind some of those cotton candy clouds. Ooh, and lo and behold, that is five. All right, I've got it pretty fast. I'm going to do a quick screen grab of this. I don't even have to save it. And now I've got my sketch. That's what you need for next class. And then what you also need is to start finding references. So I'm going to go to Pixabay, and I'm going to sign in, and I'm going to look for cotton candy. This is my idea. You guys do not need to make it out of vegetables or out of toys or out of M&Ms. You can make it out of landscape stuff. So you can look for clouds. You can look for mountains. You can look for lakes. You can look for molten pools of acid, whatever you want. Right? And they can definitely be your photos. Yeah, and those of you with a photo background and you have lots of landscape photos, you want to take some, that can be a really fun way to work. So if I look up cotton candy, I'll get all these options. Everything's going to be large enough. It's amazing because they already have an example of clouds that look like cotton candy. And that might be a good background element. And then they've got these nice kind of close-ups that I might be able to use for like cotton candy fields. And we're going to see how I'm able to um, change the color and ch change just regular clouds into cotton candy color if I want to. Because this is collage with benefits. But there are 60 images that are tagged with cotton candy. This could be like something I use for the hillsides. But what's great about these is these are all Creative Commons open. So when I click on them and I sign in with an email, I can download them at their absolute largest, which is 4,000 by 2,000 pixels, which is fantastic. And I don't need to worry about watermarks or low quality This is 6,000 by 4,000 pixels. If I want to, I can donate to the, to the contributing artists. And I make probably two, sometimes almost $3 a year from people contributing <laughs> to the images I posted to Pixabay. I know. it's Don't let the IRS know. <laughs> 
All right, so those are all my cotton candy ones. Like I said, I need five total 